hello students today we will learn what is mos test which is conducted over an engine to find the indicative power we will also learn that what indicative power of an engine is as well as we will learn about the dynamometer that is rho brake dynamometer okay so over here we can see a diagram of an si engine it is a diagram of four stroke si engine you can see that there is a cylinder there is a piston there is a connecting rod and this is the crankshaft and this is the crankcase it is like this this is an indicative diagram of an four stroke si engine okay so let's refresh that they in a four stroke engine there are four strokes those are the suction compression working and exhaust so what happens in suction stroke the inlet valve of engine opens the piston which is previously a top dead center moves toward bottom dead center so it sucks inside the charge charge means the air fuel mixture so the by this way when piston moves from tdc to bdc top dead center to bottom dead center it sucks the charge inside then when the cylinder is entirely fulfilled with the charge the inlet valve closes and piston again moves in upward direction that is toward the top dead center so this is called as compression stroke because in this case both the valves remains closed in the suction stroke the inlet valve opens the piston sucks the charge inside and when the entire cylinder fills up with charge and the piston reaches exactly over the bottom dead center the inlet valve closes now the piston moves up and it compresses the charge which is sucked inside so ultimately when compression ends and the piston reaches the top dead center a spark is introduced to the mixture which ignites the mixture so by this way energy is developed inside the cylinder so due to this developed energy high pressure is developed it gives a thrust to the piston so the next stroke is the working stroke in which that thrust pushes the piston toward the bottom dead center by this way work is done and ultimately the exhaust valve opens and the piston again moves toward the top dead center and it expels out the burnt gases which are inside the cylinder so by this way the four stroke si engine cycle completes okay now let's talk about that what happens in working stroke see when the charge is sucked and it is compressed and ultimately a spark is introduced high pressure is developed inside the cylinder of si engine so what happens that energy is in form of heat energy when the charge is ignited then the first most type of energy which is developed inside the cylinder is the heat energy so that heat energy first of all converts into mechanical energy just over the immediate top of the piston okay that is what indicative power of engine is got it see when charge burns then it develops heat energy so this that heat energy is transferred to the piston in form of mechanical energy so the immediate conversion of heat energy into mechanical energy just takes place over the piston top that energy which is available over the piston top is called as indicative power okay now what happens this indicative power is transferred to the crankshaft through this connecting rod and ultimately it is available over the crankshaft outside the engine okay so what is the difference between indicative power and the power which is available over the crankshaft it is also also called as brake power got it this indicative power and it is ultimately transferring to this crankshaft and ultimately the power which is available over the crankshaft is called as brake power now what is the difference see what happens that before reaching to this end of crankshaft where the power is available for utilization what happens in between there are some types of friction associated inside the cylinder you can see see indicative power is available over the top of piston since piston is sliding inside the cylinder it is sliding motion so some sort of friction is there between this outer wall of the piston and the inner wall of cylinder some friction is associated with the piston pin because connecting rod oscillates about the piston pin then this is an, another bearing similarly two bearings are there to uh, this support this crankshaft so some energy is lost to overcome the friction associated with those bearings similarly this crankshaft is churning inside the engine oil this is a lube oil this red color colored entity i am showing is a lube oil so some work is lost due to the viscous forces which are there inside this lube oil okay so before reaching this brake power some amount of indicative power is lost so this is the energy balance of an engine means indicative power which is available over the piston top is equals to the friction power plus brake power reason is 
सपोज आई से दैट हंड्रेड जूल्स ऑफ एनर्जी अवेलेबल ऑर द पिस्टन टॉप देन वी कैन एज्यूम दिस थिंग ट्वेंटी जूल्स ऑफ एनर्जी वुड बी लॉस टू ओवरकम द फ्रिक्शन द वेरियस टाइप ऑफ फ्रिक्शन विच आर एसोसिएट इन साइड द सिलेंडर एंड अल्टीमेटली ओवर द क्रैंक शार्ट ओवर आउट साइड द इंजिन द अमाउंट ऑफ पावर वुड बी अवेलेबल इज द बैलेंस दैट इज हंड्रेड माइनस ट्वेंटी दैट इज इक्वल टू एट्टी यूनिट्स ओके सो वंस अगेन when the ignition takes place then heat is developed that heat converts into mechanical energy immediate conversion of heat into mechanical energy happens over the piston top that is what called as indicative power so when this indicative power ultimately reaches through links to this end of crankshaft it is called as brake power some amount of indicative power is lost to overcome the various types of frictions which are inside this engine system so the energy balance is Indic indicative power equals to brake power plus friction power okay so this is what the definition and context of indicative power is now let's know we can measure the brake power of the engine by the help of a device called as dynamometer okay but how to measure the indicative power of an engine got it because we cannot go inside the cylinder and we cannot measure exactly how much amount of indicative power is just imparted over the piston top so for that purpose itself mos test is conducted okay so mos test is performed on a multi cylinder engine why multi cylinder engine that you will come to know at the end of this lecture so mos test is performed on a multi cylinder engine to find out how much indicative power is developed over the piston of e cylinder indicative power is over here okay now before understanding how the actual experiment is done we have to learn all these things first thing is dynamometer is a device to find out the amount of power over the crankshaft of engine called as brake power okay so the brake power which is available over the crankshaft can be measured by the help of a device that is called as dynamometer okay dynamometer finds that how much torque is available over the crankshaft you know this thing that when any entity rotates so definitely some torque is associated with it okay so dynamometer finds out that how much torque is available over the crankshaft okay now there is an another device called as tachometer by the help of which we can measure the angular frequency of the crankshaft you know seeing that this crankshaft spins in this engine system so in case we want to find out the what is the angular frequency of this crankshaft that could be measured by the help of a device called as tachometer now to find out how much brake power the engine is developing it is very simple power is equals to the torque available over the crankshaft into the angular frequency that's it p equals to tau omega okay so we have learned four things one is dynamometer is a device to find out how much power is available over the crankshaft of engine second thing is dynamometer measures how much torque is there over the crankshaft third thing is that there is a device called as tachometer by the help of tachometer we can find out what is the angular frequency of the engine crankshaft just by multiplying the torque over, over the crankshaft and the angular frequency omega of the crankshaft we can find out what the brake power of the engine is now next is the power deployed to overcome the friction inside the engine depends on the angular speed of engine means how much amount of indicative power would be lost to overcome the friction is chiefly depending upon the speed of engine more the speed of engine is more the amount of friction power would be and less the engine speed is less the amount of friction power associated would be it is like this so we have learned all these things now next is see this is a particular type of dynamometer called as row brake dynamometer you can see over here and this is a multi cylinder engine you can see this these are the four cylinders four cylinder engine it is okay we can see the spark plugs and this is the flywheel this is the crankshaft and this is the engine oil present inside okay now this crankshaft is connected to a type of dynamometer called as row brake dynamometer and this is the side view over here i am showing the side view of this row brake dynamometer so how uh, what is the uh, architecture of row brake dynamometer it consists of a drum dynamometer drum you can see this is a drum a cylindrical device and a rope is wound over it okay two or three turns it could be now the two ends of the rope are connected to two spring balances okay and we can tighten this rope just by rotating 
this control in case we are rotating it, there is a nut screw arrangement over here so in case we tight it we can increase the tightness of rope and in case we lose it we can decrease the tightness of rope so what happens when this drum rotates inside this wound rope so there is some friction associated with it okay so whatever amount of power which is developed by this engine is actually fighting with the friction which is associated with this wound rope over the drum that's it okay so when engine is running suppose this spring balance is showing force f1 and this spring balance is showing force f2 suppose this is rotating in anti clockwise direction and this r is the radius of drum okay and suppose by the help of tach tachometer we found that angular frequency of engine is omega once again this is the working four stroke four cylinder engine spark ignition engine and the crankshaft of this engine is connected to a rope brake dynamometer it is also called as prony rope brake dynamometer and this is the side view actually what a rope brake dynamometer is it is it consists of a drum over which two three turns of a strong rope is wound and the two ends of the rope are connected to two spring balances we can tighten we can increase the stiffness means this pull of the tension on these two ropes by just by rotating these controls okay so in case we are pulling this rope means we are making the spring balance to go in upward direction more amount of tension would be developed over these two ends and in case we are losing it then less amount of tension could be developed over these two ends of rope okay now suppose engine is running and omega is the angular frequency by the help of tachometer we have measured omega is the angular frequency okay now we can see that both the tensions f1 and f2 these forces are in upward direction so net amount of torque which is available over this drum of rope brake diameter and so as over the crankshaft would be f1 see f1 is in clockwise direction and f2 is in anti clockwise direction so net amount of force over this brake drum would be f1 minus f2 okay because it is trying to rotate the drum in anti clockwise direction and this force is trying to rotate the drum in clockwise direction so net amount of torque would be f1 minus f2 into r that is equals to tau now by the help of tachometer we have already measured the omega so tau into omega is what the brake power of this multi cylinder engine would be and one more thing we know this thing that whatever the indicative power is developed due to four cylinders would be distributed some amount of indicative power would be lost to overcome the friction power inside the engine and rest amount of power is the brake power so this brake power is what equals to the torque over this drum of rope brake diameter into omega that is the angular frequency of this crankshaft that's it so this is how the system is working now next is what we have to do to perform the mohr's test see cut the power supply to spark plug of any one cylinder out of these four cylinders we can choose any one cylinder so let's i am cutting the power supply of this first cylinder now what would happen since the tensions over the two ends of this rope are still same so the friction between this rope and the drum is same and only three cylinders are working one is cut off so now the engine will find it harder to rotate this drum with the same speed as it was previously running once again since the tensions are same we have cut one cylinder so the friction between the rope and this drum is still same since all the cylinders are not working so engine will find it harder to rotate this drum with the same speed as it was previously running so omega will dip down that's it okay now next what we have to do is we have to lose the tension in this rope just by rotating this control so by dipping it down see what would happen now the forces the tensions on the two ends of the rope has been decreased so the torque would also decrease over the drum okay what we have to do that we have to decrease the tension on the rope in such a fashion that the engine again starts running with the same omega as it was running before got it once again what is happening when one cylinder is cut off since the tensions are same so the friction between this rope and drum is still same so 
only three cylinders are working one is not working so engine will find it harder to rotate with same omega as it it was previously running with okay so omega will dip down next what we have to do is we have to lose the tension by this controlling system we have to lose the tension in the rope and we have to lose the tension by heat and trial to such a value so that the engine again comes back to its initial omega with which it was previously running because when this tension has been decrease so the friction associated with the rope and drum is also decrease three cylinders are working okay so since torque is decrease so again we can bring back the engine with same speed as it was previously running now that's it now we have two equation see initially when all the four cylinders were running then the energy balance equation was ip4 indicative power due to four cylinders equals to brake power due to four cylinders plus friction power loss due to four cylinders but now what happens since one cylinder is non working so indicative power due to three cylinders would be equals to the brake power due to three cylinders plus friction power due to four cylinders you might be surprised that still why this friction power is associated with four cylinders see because i already told that friction inside the engine is chiefly depending upon the engine speed since the omega is still same see initially it was running with omega then one cylinder cut off so omega dips down since we are losing this rope's tension and again bringing back the omega to the same value so the friction power is still same that is friction power due to four cylinders that's it this is our equation 1 and this is our equation 2 in case we are subtracting equation 2 from 1 what we are getting ip4 minus ip3 would be equals to bp4 minus bp3 plus 0 because this fp4 minus fp4 would be 0 so what does it means that indicative power due to four cylinders minus indicative power due to three cylinders equals to brake power due to four cylinders minus brake power due to three cylinders okay so ip4 minus ip3 is what the indicative power of this left cylinder okay so this is how we have calculated just by the help of dynamo see brake power can be measured by the dynamo itself we do uh, and we have calculated the indicative power without going inside the cylinder of engine because it is a very difficult task to calculate the indicative power so just by the help of dynamometer just by measuring the, the uh, brake power due to four cylinders and three cylinders and subtracting them by this method we are getting the indicative power of this cut off cylinder over which the electrical supply has been cut off similarly we can make this cylinder on means again connect this cylinder with the power supply and cut off the power supply or spark plug of cylinder 2 in that case we will find by doing the same process we can find out the indicative power of the second cylinder similarly uh, um, connect the power supply of spark plug of second engine and cut off the third cylinder we will get the indicative power of by this process itself we can get the indicative power of third cylinder so and similarly we can get the indicative power of four cylinders now what is the average indicative power of this entire engine system multi cylinder engine that would be equals to the summation of all the indicative powers due to all cylinders upon the number of cylinders this is called as average indicative power okay so this is what the mohs test is which is generally conducted in the laboratory and once again what is the purpose of mohs test to find out what is the indicative power developed over the piston top when the fuel ignites then first of all it converts into mechanical energy just over the piston top so what is the indicative power that can be found by the help of mohs test without going inside the cylinder just from outside by the help of dynamometer itself we are able to find out what is the indicative power of a multi cylinder engine now you would have understood that why a multi cylinder engine is required for conducting mohs test because in case only one cylinder is there and we are cutting off the power supply of that cylinder the engine will stop at all so at least two cylinders are required to perform a mohs test over an engine so hope you would have understood what is mohs test what is indicative power as well as you would have understood the story of this rope brake dynamometer thank you